Thank you for joining. My name is Timothy DeLeo and I'm with using windowshomeserver.com and the BYOB podcast. Microsoft has just released a public refresh of the Windows Home Server codename Veil. The whole Windows Home Server community is excited about this new beta refresh. In this video, I will show you how to perform a clean installation of the Veil beta refresh with a USB drive. What's new in Veil? Remote access, media support, backups, changes to drive extender technology, and even a new desktop dashboard and launchpad that replaces the console. If you're going to try Veil, it should be installed on a test server or on a secondary computer. Remember that Veil is a beta release and should not be used in a production environment. This build is for evaluation and testing purposes only. If you don't have your own Windows Home Server, that's okay. You can build your own. If you have an old desktop computer lying around that meets the minimum requirements for Veil, then you can make your own Windows Home Server. Remember, beta testing is your chance to help influence how the next version of Windows Home Server will look and feel. The minimum requirements for Veil are as follows. 64-bit only processing, which means you have to have a CPU capable of 64-bit instruction. You need to have at least a CPU capable of 1.4 gigahertz or better processing, one gig of RAM, and at least 160 gigabytes or larger in a hard drive. In addition, NTFS is the only supported file system. Veil server must be connected to your router via a network cable, no wireless or laptops. And although Veil works best with UPnP, universal plug and play, it is not required. How do you install Veil? It's very simple. You can install the server software either unattended, also known as headless, or manually. An unattended installation means that you do not have the ability to connect a keyboard and mouse to your server. Those of you using the test HP MediaSmart servers will have to take this route. Again, no monitor, keyboard, or mouse. In this video, I assume that you already have a keyboard, video, and mouse on a home-built server to complete the Veil installation. I have a $250 Dell PowerEdge behind me that is a 64-bit Intel processor and has 1.5 terabytes of storage across two drives. Remember, you should not install Veil on a machine that is your only server. In addition, if you're going to do a headless installation, you need to make sure that you create an answer file. To create the answer file for an unattended installation, see page 9 of the Veil beta release notes on the original release. It's important to remember to have fun and be a part of the Windows Home Server community. There are lots of websites out there that are looking for people to have input and to have a better understanding of Windows Home Server. Check back frequently with our site using windowshomeserver.com for the latest information on Veil, Windows Home Server, and other products for the connected digital home. So it's 7.30 on Friday night, August 20th, and I'm going to install on my Windows Home Server the Codename Veil Beta Refresh. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to put in my USB stick that has my Beta Refresh on it to make sure that it's recognized by the computer. You can see here that I can open the files and everything's here, ready to go. So now I'm going to restart the system. Okay, now I have my boot menu. I'm going to boot from a USB device. So now I have the screen up and what I'm going to do is run a new installation of Windows Server Codename Veil. Now you can see here that it says all files and folders will be deleted. I understand that. I've already made backups.
So here we are with the refresh setup. I'm in the United States. Click on next. You can see it's 749, so it took about 20 minutes for the installation. Of course I agree. Again, this is a beta test, so you never want to use this in production. We're going to do a product key now. To get the product key, you need to go to connect.microsoft.com and get the product key. So that's it. It's 7.57. Uh, it's taken about 26, 27 minutes. Uh, I did take a couple of minutes off for uh, moving my USB key from the front USB to the back. Uh, I totally forgot that I could only boot from the USB from the rear USB ports. So that took a couple of minutes to figure that out. Hi, Tim. What's up, neighbor? I think this is restart number five. Okay, apparently my server is now ready to use. I'm going to click on close. And here we are. So it took actually 38 minutes from beginning to end. It found my network. And I seem to be booting properly. So everything looks good. I'm now going to go in and make a few changes. But that was it. 38 minutes and a straightforward and easy setup.